that makes the charm of your character. Indeed. Indeed. Let us change the subject. You should get married. <coughs> Good God, what are you saying? I was just saying that you are getting older and you should get married. <laughs> Uncle, what have I done to you? <laughs> well, well, you made me pay your bill. Even if you have not done anything wrong, what's so bad about marriage? Oh. Come, stop being silly. Sit down. What? Let us talk seriously. 
What would you have to complain about if this very evening you had a beautiful young lady in your arms and a big bag of money when you woke up in the morning? You have debts. I will pay. When you are married, you can lead a quiet life. Mademoiselle de Mons has everything you could require. I've never met her in my life. That's irrelevant. <laughs> she likes you. Truly. I promise. Well, I dislike her. Why? For the same reason that she likes me. It makes absolutely no sense to dislike someone you haven't met. And it makes no sense to like someone you've never met. Please let us leave the matter. But, <coughs> my friend, if you think about it, we all have to make an end of it sometime. Absolutely, we all have to die one day. <laughs> I mean, we'll have to settle down eventually. Since you really care about this issue, dear uncle, and you're talking to me so seriously, I shall answer you seriously. Yes. Tell me how you feel. All right. Let us raise our glasses and be open-hearted. Do you really want to hear how I feel? Yes, and immediately. Otherwise, I shall leave. I was 16. Schoolboy. A beautiful lady with whom I was acquainted noticed me for the first time. At that age, does one know what is wrong or right? I was at my mistress's home one evening. We sat around the fire with her husband. <laughs> <laughs> the husband rises and says he's going out. At these words, a furtive glance between my lover and I made my heart leap with joy. We are going to be alone. I turn and see the poor man putting on his gloves. They were of a greenish suede, too big for him, and the seams were coming undone at the thumbs. As he stuck his hand into one of them, standing in the middle of the room, a faint smile crossed the lips of the woman and drew a light shadow in the dimples of her cheeks. Only a lover's eye can catch such smiles, for they are felt rather than seen. This one went straight to my soul, and I swallowed it like a sweet. But for some strange reason, the memory of this delicious instant became forever bound in my mind to the two big red hands shoved into the green gloves. I don't know why those hands in their confident attitude were so sad and pathetic, but every time I've remembered them since, feminine smile has tickled the corners of my mouth. And I swore to myself that no woman in the world would ever make me wear those gloves. So, you are saying, as an honest libertine, that you do not believe in, in, in women's virtue, and you're saying that some, you fear someone will hurt you in the same way you hurt that man. You said it. I fear the devil, and I will not be gloved. That's a boyish idea! <laughs> Call it what you like. In 30 years' time, it will be an old man's idea. I will never marry. I you really claim that all wives are deceitful and all husbands cuck of it? I claim nothing. I know nothing of it. But when I cross the road, I do not throw myself under an omnibus. When I drink, I do not use a chipped glass. And when I see a woman, I do not marry her. <laughs> You refuse Mademoiselle de Mont! No more than I refuse another, but nonetheless. You will be the death of it! That girl will be tremendously rich one day, and you will ruin me and go to the devil! That's what will happen! Where are you going? Fetch your hat so we can go and get some air! I don't give a damn about air! Either you marry him or I disinherit you! You disinherit me, dear uncle. God be my witness, I shall! I shall be just as stubborn as you are, and we will see which round be the first to give in! Are you disinheriting me on paper, or only verbally? On paper, you little brat! Who <laughs> will you leave your fortune to? Will you create a prize for virtue, or a Latin grammar exam? <laughs> I shall have fun and ruin myself before I let you ruin me! Listen, the idea of getting married horrifies me, but for you, good uncle, I will do anything. However strange this seems to you, will you give me your word that you'll do what I'm about to ask of you? Well, what's the matter now? First you have to promise. I will not promise anything until her will listen back. Of course you must. Fine! So 
There's only one way for me to accept to marry Mademoiselle de Mont. I have to be certain that she will never make me wear those gloves I was telling you about. How the bloody hell am I supposed to know? The odds can be assessed rather easily. You will agree with me that if the girl can be seduced in eight days, I would be a fool to marry her. Well, certainly, but how are you... That's all the time I need. The Baroness has never seen me. Her daughter neither. Tell your chauffeur to drive you to the castle today. Once there, you will say it is your regret to inform them that your nephew remained a bachelor. I shall arrive at the castle an hour after you, and you'll pretend not to know me. That's all I ask of you. The rest is my business. Are you quite mad? What on earth do you intend to do? Could seduce a young girl in eight days, caught her under a false name? Never even a fairy tale! Have I heard anything quite so idiotic? To take me was like a pantomime day! Two o'clock already. Let's go. Suit me. What can I say? 
Everything looks good on me when I'm pale. <laughs> if you do, be absolutely still. This is the critical moment. I shall recline like a shepherd from the days of yore. Oh! 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 <laughs> good morning, mademoiselle. What is a young girl like yourself doing walking all alone in the woods? Is it you, sir? I did not recognise you. Ugly word. Oh, you are too gracious. And besides, some wounds hurt less than others. Have you been served much? You are too kind, mademoiselle. Of all the virtues of your sex, hospitality is the rarest. And nowhere can it be found as sweet and as precious as in your tender self. And if the esteem you thereby show me could... I'll have the cook send you some broth. <gasps> you will marry her! You will marry her! You, you must admit she was perfect! Such naivety! What divine discretion! Oh, we could not have found better! Dear uncle, please <laughs> calm down. You are far too hasty. Uh, am I being? We have seen all we needed to see. Come, let us go and give us everything to the baroness. You will I will soon her broth! young lady pronounce such a word. I dislike her. She is ugly and stupid. Farewell, dear uncle. I am returning to Paris. Are ah! you joking? Is this how you keep your words? And tell me exactly why you are looking so disappointed. Do you take me for a lecture of your kind? What's this whole rage? Uh, just a, a, a pretext for you to attempt a new seduction? Oh my god, that was so... I do not like her. It's not my fault. And why, pray tell, do you not like her? She is good-looking, and I know something about these things. She, she has long, well-cut eyes, perfect hair, quite a good figure. Um, yeah, she's well-behaved, she speaks Italian. Oh, and she has a wonderful dowry. <laughs> why do you not like her? Why does one always have a reason to like or dislike people? It is certain that I dislike her, her, her sprain and her broth. If I had not been here to witness this whole event, you would have come back with a thousand tales of how promising your first meeting had been. You liked her last night when her and her mother were tending to that wound of yours. But now, <laughs> now you call her ugly because she could not care less about you. <laughs> I know you better than you think. You are not getting out of this so easily. Oh, no, no, you are still. As you wish. But I'm telling you, I find her ugly. She has big eyes, certainly, but they have nothing to say. She has good hair, but over a flat forehead. I must congratulate her on her knowledge of Italian. Perhaps she's wittier in foreign languages. As for her dowry, dowry. she can keep it. It sounds just about as attractive as her broth. Oh, I was ever heard of such bad faith? I was right yesterday when I called you an idiot and a waste of time. Oh, you cannot have any serious idea and you're turning away a fortune when it's offered to you on a silver platter. What have we here? Take a look, Uncle. I believe she's coming back this way. What? Where? What's going on? Yes, she's coming up this path. She'll be at this soon. What's going on? Hi, Uncle! What's more? Have you just like that? Who cares? I'm a coster. That way you're going to say I don't take time over the matter. If she holds the ground, will you marry her? <laughs> Sir, my mother bade me ask you whether you shall be leaving tonight. Uh, yes, Mademoiselle, that is my intention. You see, the thing is, sir, there is a game of whist taking place in the salon, and my mother would like you to be our fourth player. <clears throat> I'm terribly sorry, but I do not play whist. Oh, well... If you were to remain for dinner, we shall be serving truffled pheasant. Thank you, but I do not eat pheasant. And after dinner, we shall be hosting a little soiree. We will be dancing the mazurka. Forgive me. I do not dance. What a shame. Farewell, sir. Come now, come now. Will you marry her? What's, what's all this nonsense about leaving? This is another one of these tricks of yours. You're right. She is pleasant. I like her better the second time. <laughs> she has a little mark on the corner of her mouth that I had not noticed before. Where are you going? But isn't it a bit early in the day to be playing whist? Do you play, Uncle? You should go back to the castle. 
certainly. But, but first I want to know whether you're staying or going. If I stay, I do it only for our wager. Hmm. I shall not attempt anything in the new future. My arm is killing me. Calm, you should rest. Yes, I want to taste that broth that's waiting for me upstairs. Then I have to write. I shall see you at dinner. Write? I sincerely hope you're not writing to her. If I were to write to a love letter, it is only for our wager. I, I, I sincerely disapprove of this project. Unless you show the letter beforehand. As you wish. But I must make it clear to you that I only like her very slightly. <laughs>
were saying that 45 points? No! 40 <laughs> points! <laughs> Cecile does not seem to be in a very talkative mood. You do not know what you are talking about. It's the priest who makes her feel shy. She's my child. I know her by heart. You've lost, Father. <laughs> Good Father, the parish clerk is here to see you. By whatever form? I'm busy! Give your cards to Ben Buck. He'll play this round for you. Oh! 
as it is you. It is me. Come here where the moonlight shines. We can sit on the moss. No. Come over here where it's dark. Under the shade of the trees. But I you have to hide from prying eyes. I will not see your face there. Come, Valentine, do as I say. And where is your uncle? I thought that he would be here too. My uncle? Why would my uncle be at our rendezvous? Well, this morning when we were talking, I saw him crouching behind a bush. I thought he might have the habit of following me. Impossible, you must have imagined it. Can't be my uncle. No, no, I saw the branches move as we were talking. Did you not notice? <laughs> <laughs> what madness. You must have been daydreaming. Let's forget about it, hmm? about my mother in your letter. Forgive me. I was overtaken by a moment of passion and I could not master my words. But did you not think that in disrespecting my mother who brought me up, you were also disrespecting me? Let's not talk about that since you have forgiven me. Oh, my Cecile, you are so beautiful. You can give such happiness to a man. That's your head on my heart. Hear how it's beating, oh, let the starry sky above us tell God how they beat together. Yes, Valentine, my heart is honest. Can you feel how soft my hair is? I put some iris in. I was only able to do one side properly, though. <laughs> tell me, why did you come to my house under a fake name? I cannot say. It was a whim, a bet I made. Who cares about these follies of mine? A bet? Could it have been with your uncle? Yes, Cecilia. I wanted to know you, but without having anyone between us. You're right. I would have done the same in your place. But tell me, why did you t say that you do not dance the mazurka? I saw you dance it last winter. Well, I do not remember that. At Madame de Greve, at the fancy dress ball? Last winter, like you said in your letter. Don't you remember? Oh, Cecilia, look. The wind is trying to blow away the greedy scarf that covers your shoulders. <laughs> Listen, it is the voice of the night. It is the bird's song of happiness. No one can see us. All is asleep. Except for lovers. <laughs> Allow me to take off your scarf and replace it with my arm. No, let me keep hold of your hand. I can feel my heart in mine, and through our, ha our hands I can lead it to yours. Tell me, why did you want to pretend that you were going back to Paris? I had to. To be honest, I didn't even expect you to come tonight. I suffered while I was waiting for you. But why would I not have come, when I knew that we were going to be married? Valentine, are you all right? Is something wrong? Please, sit with me. It's nothing. I, I, thought I, I thought I saw someone over there. No, don't worry. We're alone. Come next to me. Or would you rather I stand? Did I say something wrong? Your face has changed. It's nothing, I promise. It's just an involuntary thought that crossed my mind. Would you rather I stand up, then? Come, give me your arms. Can I tell you something? This morning, I told Henriette to make you some broth because... I was worried about you. I brought it to your room myself. But then, when I gave it to you, I thought that you did not want it, because you looked so displeased. I was walking in the garden. I kept wondering what you would do. But then, I saw that you did go upstairs. And so I went round to the side of the house where your room was, and I, I spied you through your window. You drank it all in one go. I was so happy. It was what you needed, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It was excellent. Good as you and your heart. When we are husband and wife, I'll take even better care of you. Tell me, why drive your car into a ditch? What on earth was that for? You could have killed yourself. Do you read a lot of novels? Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Let's sit again. I'll admit I do not really like novels. Authors will just put anything in. It's all just seductions, tricks, secret plots, a thousand impossible things. I do like where they're set, though. I like imagining those landscapes. I'll admit that 
When I read your letter and saw it was about a secret rendezvous in the woods, I gave in and came to see you, like a character in a novel would have done. But then again, I knew the consequences would be rather in my favour. You do realise we'll have to be married now that we are courting. However angry your mother, my mother and your uncle are at each other, they'll have to make up. Am I a hunter caught in his own snare? <laughs> or am I a lunatic returning to sanity? I'm not saying anything. How long are you going to be sad for? You, you seem wise for your years. At the same time, a bit clumsy, like me. Yes, I am clumsy. But it's because I love you. You know, we only exchanged three words at that ball last winter, but I remember them with all my heart. Do you remember? You do not. And in your letter, you said you've been in love with me since last winter. Cecile, are you not afraid of me? Were you not nervous when you imagined what would happen tonight? Nervous? What should I be afraid of? I am young. You are a beautiful girl. You are alone. Well, what's wrong with that? You're right. Nothing wrong. Listen to me. Let me know. No, you're shaking. I'm shaking because I'm anxious and happy because... Let me open my heart to you. I am a rogue of the very worst kind. There's nothing original about what I'm about to tell you. All I've done, ever since I came of age, is gamble and drink. You're telling me novels shock you. There's one you can't have read, it's called... Clarissa Harlow, I'll, I'll give it to you when you're my wife. The hero loves a beautiful girl like you, my dear, and he wants to marry her, but first he wants to test her. He, he kidnaps her and takes her to London, but there she resists him, and Bedford, no, Thomas and the captain arrives, or... Or is it Morden? <laughs> I can't remember. The point is, Lovelace is an idiot, and I am an idiot too for trying to play that part. Thank the Lord, you have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> what I really want to say is, I love you. I want to marry you. The only real thing in this world is falling in love and forgetting everything. It's the parents if we find it before it's too late! <laughs> Dear nephew, I, I hope that, in terms of our bets, I hope uh, the fact that you've kissed her doesn't mean that you will never marry. I Dear uncle, never say never. <laughs>